Welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on SABC3, still broadcasting across the land. Now, on the 15th of May 2012, a day.org asked people from all across the world to pick up their cameras to photograph what was close to them on one single day. The response proved phenomenal, and the initiative became the most comprehensive documentation of a single day in human history through photography. And over 100,000 photographs were taken and submitted from 165 countries, and 1,000 of these were selected and put in a book called A Day in the World. Renowned photographer JP Wickstrom heads up the project and joins us here this morning to tell us about this very amazing and inspiring project. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. Fine, thank you. How Great. Are you? This is amazing. I mean, I've just had a peek through a couple of these pictures here, <clears throat> and it's most inspiring. Tell me about where the idea of a day in the world came from. Well, being a photographer, I realized that we, we spend so much time focusing on celebrities, catastrophes, war, politics, and celebrities. And so all those everyday moments, they rarely get captured. Yeah. So we wanted to... to to change that. Mm -hmm. And what was the benefit for this? At the end of the day, I mean, there was, you, you're a charitable organization? Yes, it's, uh, this project has been run, been run by the Foundation Expressions of Humankind based in Sweden. Mm -hmm. And so the response you got was overwhelming. You didn't expect that you were going to get a hundred, over 100,000 photos from across the world. Well, actually, we got, we got from almost every country in the world, including North Korea, which was a great surprise. Um, so we were overwhelmed by all these images and the wow. quality of the images as well. How, how did you all make this happen? How did this come about? You, you had a website going on <clears throat> and you had people coming onto the website and you encouraged them to take photos on this one day. How did it all happen? Well, thanks to internet, you know, it's easy to reach out uh, in, uh, throughout the world. So we collected, the, we, we made advertising on the internet, we collected the images on the internet and all those 100,000 images are shown on aday.org. Yeah, and so we have a p couple of pictures as well where South Africans uh, were, were um, represented well, if you could say so. Yes, yes. Let's take a look. I mean, obviously, that's the cover of the, of the picture itself, but let's take a look at this picture. Um, I don't know if you can remember the names of the people that sent it in, but tell us about the photo. Well, actually, this is one of my favorites. It's a photographer. His name is uh, Altus Pienaar, yeah. and uh, it's taken in Middleburg. Uh, and it's a beautiful picture. At the same time, it's a bit sad because this guy, he's, he lacks money to, to you know for the prepaid electricity, so he's... he's Got borrowed a heater is going to his girlfriend and going to stay over the night to heat just one room instead of two rooms. Wow. So it's a, it's a picture of life. Yeah. And all of these photos are time dated. This was at 25 minutes past five, as I remember. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Let's what go to the next one. This one. Well, that's actually you after you leaving this shift, you know. It's <laughs> <laughs> possibly, quite possibly. But this was no, taken in Johannesburg. David Klein took this picture in Joburg. It's uh, people leaving the morning shift, you know. So it's uh, they are they are exhausted. And I mean, it's it's amazing how just. Seeing, seeing this picture, you kind of understand a bit, a little bit of the struggle that, uh, you know, people go through just through oh, pictures, yes. right? Oh, yes. Just and pictures have this wonderful capacity of connecting, you know, through, yes. you know, transcending the barriers of age, culture and gender and so on. This a beautiful one, kind of wind uh, mull in your achterplaats. What is yes. this one? <laughs> well, actually, it's, this is a beautiful example of all the, the uh, Instagrams that we received, yeah? which is a sign of the times as well. So people could send in, you know, professional uh, photos, photos taken from mobile phones, anything. Yes, actually every fifth image in this project was taken with a mobile phone. This is David Larson who's taking this great picture. Wow, okay, let's, let's move on to the next one there. Wow, okay. Well, this is the thing that usually ends up in, in, uh, in the news, but, but uh, this picture from Cape Town didn't make it for the news because it wasn't just such a big accident, but it's one of those terrible things that happens once in a while, you know. Yeah. So, again, one of those everyday moments. So, JP, what did you believe to be the significance of a project like this? Photos taken in 24 hours, a single day, on, on our planet. What, what is the significance to you? Well, I think there are two reasons for doing this. One is to connect people throughout the world through photography, because as Archbishop Desmond Tutu writes in the preface of the book, pictures has this wonderful capacity of transcending the barriers of age, culture, gender, and language. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I think it's also important to send a message to the future. This is who we are, this is who we were on the 15th of May 2012, and we were more than, than all those uh, celebrities and catastrophes and wars and, and uh, things like that. Yeah. So. And you got the likes of Richard Branson and Archbishop Desmond to be involved in the project. How did you do that? Well, we wrote them and they loved the project and wrote back, you know, and, and uh, Desmond Tutu, was, he was immediate. He wrote back from his iPad, I love this, can I help you? He, he replied from his iPad. Did you get to speak to him on the phone at all? Yeah, we met him also. Did he, did he give you his iconic <laughs> <laughs> laugh? Amazing stuff. So this book is going on sale now across the world? Yes. It's distributed by Penguin here in, in South Africa and it's published in 10 different languages yeah. all over the world. And you said there's going to be a custodian in each con on each continent, right? Yes, the because continent. we the higher images, we want them to be preserved for the future. So on each continent, there will be one institution taking care of these images for safekeeping and for future research. And it's going to be 
Uni University of Cape Town here on the African continent is Absolutely. taking care of the images. Amazing. Well, congratulations on getting this done in a killer six weeks, where this could have usually taken about six months. You said, well done. It's a, it's a, a most inspiring project, and I hope that people across the world really take to it Thank and you. get themselves a copy. A day in the world, and we are with a head photographer there, Mr. J.B. Wickstrom. Uh, you can get more information, of course, on our website, expressoshow.com. Don't go anywhere. Lots more to come.